Hi everybody, I'm Tom from Slip Fence and I'm here today to talk to you about the installation of the horizontal slip fence system. The first thing that we're going to do is you've got to set your posts into the ground and typically you would drill a 8 inch diameter hole into the earth and you're going to fill that with concrete and put the post into that. You want to dig it at least 3 to 4 feet in depth to give you a nice solid stable fence system once you're done. The other thing is is that you want to space your posts for the horizontal system six feet between. So once you set your first post, the next post in the line, you want that to be six feet from that post. And the way that we do this is we typically cut one of your deck boards that you're going to be using in the horizontal fence anyway and this will give you a perfect spacer. So once this post is in the concrete, it's starting to dry, you put your six foot piece of wood onto the ground and this gives you the spacing for your next post to set. The next thing that you're going to remember when you are setting the posts is that you need 76 inches from the ground to the top of your post for a six foot fence. For a seven foot fence, you need 88 inches from the ground to the top of the post. And for an eight foot fence, 100 inches from the ground to the top of the post. Once your posts are set and you leave them in concrete overnight to dry, then you're ready to set up your fence. So this is how your horizontal channel kit is going to arrive to your site. It's going to be in a poly bag. And inside of this poly bag is the hardware. So once you take it out of the poly bag, you'll notice once we open the channels up, you've got both screw sets here. The number 12 uh, self-tapping stainless screws that will tap the channels into the post. And then you've got your wood screws, also stainless steel, that attach the wood to the channels. Once you have your channels unpacked out of the bag, the first step in getting your channels uh, attached to the post is you want to make sure that you've got the screw holes all on one side. So each of these channels, two come in a bag and each of them have screw holes for your boards drilled into one side. So you want to make sure that those are all on the same side of your fence as you set your fence up. Next, we're going to attach the first channel in your fence line to the first post. And the question is, how high do we make this off the ground? What we do is we'll, put, we'll place either one or two of the deck boards that are, you're going to fill your fence up with later onto the ground. Now, we've got two fence boards here, and what we're going to do is space out the bottom of the first channel by two deck boards, and then we're going to proceed to fasten this channel to the post with the self-tapping screws that are enclosed in the channel kit. So once you've got the height of your first channel that goes on the first post, you're going to attach the channels to the post. And the way that you're going to do that is you're going to use the number 12 stainless self-tapping screws that come in the channel kit. You're going to use a number 3 Phillips that gives it a nice solid grip in drilling these in, like so. Now before you drill all of the five screws into the channel to fasten the channel to the post, you want to get the height of your next channel first. And the way that we do that is with a straight edge from the top of the first channel that you drilled in to the next post. Now this happens to be the cap rail, we'll talk about that later, but you could use a piece of wood, um, a long level, whatever the case may be. And this is how we do it. So we sit it right on top of the, the first channel. Then we'll take our level, we'll place the level on top, and we'll find out where the level is for the next post. And then there's level right there. And we'll simply put a mark here. And that is the height for your next channel so that these two channels are absolutely level with each other. So we're just going to take our mark that we made on the other side out around to the front. We're going to put a mark on here. And then from there, we're going to take our next channel, line it up with the top, just like this and like this. And we drill it in just like we did the first post, just like this. So once you've got your second channel attached to your second post, now theoretically these two channels should now be perfectly level with each other and then you can proceed to complete fastening the channels to the post through the screw holes that are here with your number 12 screws. Also just before you do that, make sure that all of the screw holes in the channel are both on the same side of the fence and then you'll just proceed to screw the channels to the post with the number 12 self-tapping screws that are in the kit, like so. 
The next step in the assembly of your horizontal slip fence is to start stacking in the boards. And the board that you're going to use for this system is, it's called a five quarter inch deck board. The actual thickness of a five quarter inch deck board is one inch. The inside dimension of the channel is one and an eighth, so if the boards have a tiny little bit of a cup in them or, or anything else, then they'll still slide down the channel without any problem. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to slide in the bottom board, or baseboard we call it, into the channels. Okay, now this doesn't matter at the moment. You'll see that there's two holes on one side and there's also two holes on the other side of both sides of each channel. The reason for this is because this is your baseboard and this board is the one that's going to hold the stack of your other 12 while they dry out. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this up and you want your the bottom of your baseboard to be flush with the bottom of the channel right here. And then we're going to proceed to screw in just one of these right now until we get this board level. I just hold it with my foot while I screw the very first screw into the bottom hole. Okay. So now we're going to come to the other post with the channel, the other side of the board. And we're going to put our level right on top of the board. We're going to find our level on this board. It should be flush with the bottom. Somewhere right about there. Again, I'm going to hold this with my foot on the other side. And we're going to put in this screw, wood screw, on the bottom in one spot. So now you'll proceed to put in, as long as you've got a level uh, for your bottom baseboard, which we do, then you'll proceed to insert the rest of the wood screws on the bottom board, which is another one on this side, and then there's two more on this side, and as well on the other post over here. So once we've got our bottom baseboard all screwed in nice and tight uh, with all four screws on both sides then we're going to start the stack. Now this is the other reason that we recommend that you don't ship six foot boards to the site. We want you to cut the boards on site because when you're setting your post you may have to come back a couple of inches go forward a couple of inches just you know you may hit a, a root or a rock or something to that effect while you're drilling the hole. So just get your measurement between the two posts and then we're going to start cutting the boards. Now the one thing that I do when we lay the boards in is that deck boards may have a little tiny bit of a wow in them one way or the other. So just eyeball down the board and just make sure that you've got all the concaves on one side and all the, the bows on the other side if there is anything. And then we'll just proceed to put these in like so. As you get to your fourth board, then you want to go to the next section and start again from your bottom baseboard up. So you want to have, quite truthfully, you want to have all your baseboards in first and then do a stack of four boards, then go to the next section. Stack of four boards, stack of four boards, four boards all the way along your fence line, then come back to this section and go another four boards. This keeps the post nice and level all the way throughout your fence build and it also keeps them nice and plumb and straight uh, laterally as well. So we'll continue to do this until we've got all of our all boards in and then we'll talk about the cap rail. Okay, so once you have your last board on the top, you're going to notice that there's going to be a little bit of a, uh, the board's going to be a little bit taller than the channels, and that's okay. That's actually the way that the system was engineered, because what's going to happen is because the boards ship from the mills typically a little bit wet, it will, for the most part, shrink down a little bit. So you'll notice in three weeks, we're going to leave the whole stack loose, except for the bottom board that we tacked in at the very beginning. So this whole stack is going to is going to shrink about an inch, inch and an eighth. And if you opted for the aluminum cap rail to go on the top, which really, really finishes off the fence beautifully, the cap rails actually come in seven foot lengths. They're 84 inches long. The reason for that is you, if you didn't hit your post absolutely positively at six foot center, that's fine. Or six foot between, that's fine. So this uh, 
the cap rail was actually designed to be cut to the exact length. So what we're going to do is take a measurement on the top of this last board and then we're going to cut the cap rail with our, uh, we've got a metal blade on our chop saw, we're going to cut it and then we're going to show you how it goes on the top. To cut the aluminum cap rail for the horizontal system, just as long as you've got a non-ferrous metal blade on your chop saw or your power saw, the new saw blades really truly cut through the aluminum almost like it's lumber. Once you have your cap rail cut to the same size as your top board, you're going to simply install the cap rail onto the top of the top board, like this. It fits nice and snug, quite truthfully. I'm just going to give it a couple of hits along the top. There you go. And now you'll see, because the, because the cap rail, you've got about an inch and a half play. So while this is, the stack is shrinking, this cap rail will tuck in right inside the channel. Once the, the, whole, the full stack shrinks, then the cap rail fits right inside the channel so it can move up or down. And okay, so three weeks later, once the, the full stack of boards has shrunk down to its, uh, its final resting place and how your fence is going to look, you may, want to, you may have to do a couple of adjustments on uh, the cap rail. But the way that you're going to fasten the cap rail to the top board is just have a, a metal bit on your drill. This is, this is much thinner than the side rails. Just give this a drill here and use one of the, the same screws that you tack into the side of the channel into the wood to just fasten on the top. It makes it simple, simple, simple. Then don't forget after your three week drying out period to fill in all your screws in through the screw holes. So once you have your cap rail set and everything is all put together, your fence is basically done. Now the last thing that you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to trim all your posts in your fence line. What we like to do is leave about two and a half, two to two and a half inches of the post just above the cap rail. It just makes for a really handsome looking fence. And to trim the top posts, the same way we trim the, the cap rail is just have a non-ferrous blade on your, we use a circular saw, trim it on one side, trim it on the other side. If you have a 10 inch blade, it's fantastic. It's even easier, you only do it one time. After the posts are all trimmed, you've got about two and a half inches up above your cap rail, then you just put on post caps. These post caps are all packed inside of each post like so. So when you unpack your post, don't forget to look inside the, the bag to make sure that the cap isn't still in the bag because that's how they're packed. And then you literally set the post cap on top. They're all self-tightening. Get your rubber mallet, two hits, two hits. Same thing on the, on, with the whole fence line, same deal. Post cap on top and two hits. And that's it. And your fence is done.